Happy early new year everybody and welcome to Lex's world. So this year as we enter the era of post-prohibition of cannabis here in Canada, as well as for a big chunk of the US population, I think it's worth taking a hard look back at how we even really came to have decades of prohibition of this particular plant. How and when did pot prohibition really start? Because the story, which you might have heard references to before, is pretty interesting and tragic, but often mistold. So, before the 1900s, there was no concept in North America of the word marijuana, or of cannabis. Certainly not as any kind of problem that needed to be dealt with. The word everyone knew was hemp. Hemp was a common farm crop in use for many years, they made clothing, rope, medicine, candles, and a variety of other things out of it, and yes, a certain variety of hemp with a higher THC content and a different appearance was known as cannabis and was both being used as a medication and smoked recreationally in the entire northwestern hemisphere. As my episode on the pre-prohibition era explained, human around the globe had been using cannabis for a while. I'll link to that episode in the video description. But anyway, the recreational use of it wasn't hugely popular in 1905, and nobody was uncomfortable with the idea of any of this. Medical and recreational cannabis was barely on anybody's radar, while industrial hemp was a very decent-sized industry. Then something started to go wrong, and it started going wrong long before 1937. In 1913, cannabis was already banned in Jamaica. In 1920, Mexico actually beat the USA by a good 17 years to make cannabis illegal at the federal level there. In 1923, it was banned in Canada under very unclear circumstances and without parliamentary debate. It was just kind of added onto a list of harder drugs getting banned. And in the United States, between 1906 and 1937, in a long series of legal changes, cannabis went from being slightly regulated only when packaged as medicine, to being totally banned in state after state, with restrictions in New York, California, and Texas all before 1920, to eventually being effectively banned nationwide even in industrial hemp form. After the mid-1930s, the rest of the world quickly followed, at least on banning cannabis as medicine and as a recreational drug, and in many cases criminalizing all cultivation, even hemp. Why did this happen? Well, there were several reasons for this dramatic but gradual shift. Some of it was simple clamping down on a plant that was well known as a medication during a time period when governments were cracking down hard on many previously unregulated meds. Some of it had to do with racism, since recreational cannabis use became closely associated with Hispanic and black minorities at a time when the ruling white minorities all over the world disliked both of these groups. The voices against cannabis were also amplified by a general streak of anti-drug prohibitionism that was sweeping the continent. Remember, this wasn't just happening to cannabis. Alcohol prohibition, as dysfunctional and short as it was, hit around the same time period. Now, certainly there were individuals among the public more responsible for the shift than others, like media mogul William Randolph Hearst, whose empire of newspapers spread many outlandish stories about cannabis and popularized the slightly misspelled Mexican slang term for it, marijuana, simply just to tie this drug back with Mexicans in the minds of the mostly white American readers. Decades later, hemp activist Jack Herrera claimed that Hearst was targeting cannabis due to his business interests, which were at odds with industrial hemp, 
Well, this kind of makes sense. It's actually a totally unproven theory that simply gained a lot of traction over the years. But whatever Hearst's real motivation was, he certainly did a big chunk of the damage to weed through his media empire. There were plenty of other publishers sensationalizing the dangers of cannabis way back in those days, but Hearst was an absolute titan of media at the time, so his impact really counts. There were also individuals in government who were more responsible than others, individuals who took aggressive and targeted policy actions against cannabis. The worst by far was bureaucrat Harry J. Onslinger from the American Federal Bureau of Narcotics, predecessor of the Drug Enforcement Administration, by the way. Anslinger had a strong dislike of minorities and of all recreational drug use, with a special hate on for weed, and he led the Bureau for 32 years. He also understood that if he could turn Congress against cannabis, it would provide the Bureau with lots of work and lots of budget, since the drug was pretty widespread. So, he had the Bureau promote anti-marijuana films and messaging which were designed off of the information found in news articles like Hearst's. The result was crazy, over-the-top propaganda documentaries like 1936's Reefer Madness, which followed a normal family totally destroyed by cannabis. A link to the actual full film in the video description. The film is laugh-out-loud funny today, but for the innocent people of the 1930s who had no internet or alternate media voices, it was very scary and helped further turn the nation against cannabis. Onslinger constantly tied cannabis back to disliked minorities of the era using his rhetoric in Washington, referring to marijuana as the drug of Mexicans or the drug of Negroes, and that it led to violence, temporary insanity, and satanic music if consumed. Lastly, Anslinger made important legal moves against cannabis. First, by lobbying for the Uniform State Narcotics Act in 1932. This act, enacted in 1934 for the first time, introduced cannabis regulation in many American states that didn't have it yet. Next, he was heavily involved in promoting tougher drug laws at the League of Nations, spreading his reefer madness globally. And in that same period, he drafted and fought for the 1937 Marijuana Tax Act, which effectively killed the last remnants of cannabis in the United States by levying impossibly high taxes on all hemp cultivation. This chain of events all directly paved the way for cannabis to eventually be classified as a Schedule I drug in the U.S. in 1970, in the most dangerous category of drugs with no medical uses and high abuse potential. And that brings us to today, when these types of laws and attitudes are being slowly and painstakingly undone all over the world by the simple realization that pot prohibition was just like a weird mania triggered by a toxic mix of misinformation, ignorance, and just plain old racism. I'm a big believer that to fix these bad decisions faster, people have to know how illogical prohibition was to begin with. So I hope you give this video a share to spread the knowledge, and otherwise subscribe if you found this useful, smash that like button if you had a productive time, and we will see you back here next time on Lux's World.